Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. We are at the second section of page 178, and if everything went to plan, the last episode had a guest. Uh, so I assume that would... I don't know why that wouldn't have happened, but it probably happened. All right, our first word for this episode is camp follower. Two words, noun from 1810. One, a civilian, as a prostitute, who follows a military unit to attend or exploit military personnel. Uh, given the example, I, is, I think we can probably figure out what way they are being exploited. Number two, a disciple or follower who is not of the main body of members or adherents, especially a politician who joins the party or movement solely for personal gain. That is super selfish. We got to be selfish, but maybe not to that level. Next, we have campground, one word, noun from 1805. The area or place, as a field or grove, used for a camp, for camping, or for a camp meeting. And if I remember correctly, we were at the word camp. One of the, one of the first couple forms said it was uh, from the Latin campus, which means plain or field. So that's, it all comes together. Next, we have camp fiend. C-A-M-P-H-E-N-E, -E, noun from circa 1847, any of several terpenes related to camphor, which is our next word, but especially a colorless crystalline terpene, C10H16, used in insecticides. That is campfine. Now we have camphor. Uh, you can sort of pronounce the P if you want, camp camphor or camphor. Uh, C-A-M-P-H-O-R, noun from the 14th century, a tough, gummy, volatile, aromatic, crystalline compound, C-10-H-16-O, obtained especially from the wood and bark of the camphor tree and used as a liniment and mild topical analgesic in medicine as a plasticizer and as an insect repellent. Also, any of se several similar compounds as some terpene alcohols alcohols and ketones. That was so much information. Camphoraceous? Camphoraceous is an adjective. Uh, this is from an um, Arabic word, kafur, uh, from a Malay word, kapur. Next we have camphorate. Camphor with an A-T-E, verb from 1641, to impregnate or treat with camphor. Yeah. Next we have the camphor tree. Two words, noun from 1607. A large Asian evergreen tree of the laurel family grown in warm regions. The, sci the scientific name is cinnamonum, cinnamomum, cinnamomum, cinnamomum camphora. Looks sort of like cinnamon. Cinnamon, but there's a, it's missing the last N. Next we have campion. C-A-M-P-I-O-N, campion. It's like champion, but with no H. Noun from 1576, any of various plants of the pink family. This is a family of the pink things. The genera name are lichnis. Don't know how to pronounce that. L-Y-C-H-N-I-S. And also silene. It's so silly. Uh, oh, interesting. This is probably from the obsolete word campion, which means champion. Not sure how that's related to the pink family, but they are the champions. Next is camp meeting. Two words, noun from 1803. A series of evangelistic, evangelistic meetings usually held outdoors and attended by persons who often camp nearby. So they are being evangelical, and so I'm not really sure what that context means. Anyway, it's just a bunch of people who are camping and they have to have a meeting about it. Next, we have Campo, or Campo, C-A-M-P-O, noun from 1863, a grassland plain in South America with scattered perennial herbs. This is from the Spanish word. It means field, uh, and from the Latin word campus, which we've talked about before. Next, we have Campari, or Campari. Noun from 1927, a gathering of Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts from a given geographic area. And this is made from combining camp, 
plus jamboree. It's a camperee. Sounds so fun. Next is camp out. One word, noun from 1879. An occasion on which a group camps out. It's just an occasion where a group of people are camping out. Next is camp shirt. Two words, noun from 1977. A woman's shirt having a notched collar and often patch pockets. Why is the collar notched? Is there a specific reason for that? I don't know why. Why is it a woman's shirt? Can't a, can a man have a camp shirt? Are they not allowed to have camp shirts? Next is campsite. One word, noun from 1910. A place suitable for or used as the site of a camp. How oh, There are so many camp words. Next is campus. Noun from 1774. One, the grounds and buildings of a university, college, or school. Two, a university, college, or school viewed as an academic, social, or spiritual entity. Three, grounds that resemble a campus, as in a hospital campus. Also as in a landscaped, landscaped, landscaped corporate campus. And this is just from the Latin word campus, which we were talking about, which means plain. And I do think that it is not pronounced campus in Latin. I think it is campus, just from the the little bit of Latin rules that I remember from back in the day. Um, okay, next is, uh, uh, this is a fun one, Campylo, Campylobacter, Campylobacter or Campylobacter, C-A-M-P-Y-L-O-B-A-C-T-E-R, Campylobacter. This is a noun from 1964, any of a genus of spirally curved, motile, gram-negative, rod-shaped bacteria, of which some are pathogenic pathogenic in domestic animals and humans. I think that means they can send it around. Oh, this was a fun word. Uh, This is from the Greek word kampelos, which means bent. So it's probably curved. Did it say curved? It says a rod shape, so that doesn't... But it is spirally, so uh, that's that's where the bent probably comes from. Uh, Then plus bacterium, the the bacter from bacterium. It is akin to the Greek word campi, which means bend, and there's more at the word gambit. The genus name, by the way, is Campylobacter. It's just, just the same word with a capital C. Next, we have a related word, Campylop... How do you say this? Campylop... Oh, I had trouble with this before. Campylotropus. Campylop... Campyl, see, there's something something in there that doesn't, that doesn't come out right. I want to switch a couple letters around. Campylotropus, Campylotropus, C-A-M-P-Y-L-O-T-R-O-P-O-U-S, Campylotropus, adjective from 1835, having the ovule curved. Ovule, I assume that's something egg-related, having the ovule curved. And then we have a couple more words. Next is camshaft. I thought it was the last word, but it's not. Noun from 1847, a shaft to which a cam is fastened or of which a cam forms an integral part. We talked about cams a couple of episodes ago. Go back and listen. Next is our last word. It is cam wheel. Two words, noun from 1847, a wheel set or shaped to act as a cam. Well, these were a lot of fun words. Let's see if I can say them all. Camp follower, campground, camp theme, camp fur, Camp for it, uh, or camp for eight, camp for tree, campion, camp meeting, campo, campery, camp out, camp shirt, campsite, campus, campylobacter, campylotropus, camshaft, and cam wheel. Um, this is this is hard, hard. Uh, let's see. Well, you know, just because it's fun, I'm gonna pick camp camp for tree as the word of the episode, and uh, you know. The, the, the scientific name is Cinnamomum, Cinnamomum, Camp for a Cinnamomum, Cinnamomum. What is wrong with these songs? Cinnamomum, Camp for a is the scientific name of the camp for tree. It is of the Laurel family, and it grows in warm regions. Thank you very much for listening. This has been Spencer Dispensing Information, and that's all. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. 
The first word in this episode is can. C-A-N, first form, noun, no. Uh, this one is a verb, I think. There's so much information that I have to skip. You could say can, ken, kin. Some people say kin in the different dialects. Uh, yeah, this is a verb from before the 12th century. It is old. We are starting with transitive. One is obsolete. Synonyms are know, like I know this, and understand. I can, I know this, I can this, yeah. Number two is archaic. To be able to do, make, or accomplish. I can do this. All right, so we just had a couple of those. Now we have a number of intransitive definitions. Uh, the first one, oh, interesting. So in general, I think this is saying that the intransitive is just archaic, uh, and it means to have knowledge or skill. Okay, but then, I didn't even notice this, then we have it's not intransitive and it's not transitive, it's verbal auxiliary. Verbal auxiliary, now we have the definitions. 1A, know how to, as in, she can read. 1B, be physically or mentally able to, as in, he can lift 200 pounds. I kind of think they should have switched these. She can lift 200 pounds. He can read. Uh, 1C, this is used to indicate possibility, uh, as in, do you think he can still be alive? Oh boy, what are the situation? What's the situation here? Why? Why are we asking this question? Um, also, as in, those things can happen. Yes, they can. And it is sometimes used interchangeably with the word may. Oh, I remember back in the day, in like first grade, second grade, I would say, uh, hey, can, to the teacher, can I do this? And the teacher would say, well, I, I don't know. I think you can, but the, you should be asking, may you do this? Do I have permission to do this? Yes, you have permission to jump up and down and yell the alphabet. You can do it. You are physically able to do it. But may you do it? Actually, no, you may not, because that's going to be disruptive to the class. Moving on to 1D. Be permitted by conscience or feeling to, as in, can hardly blame her. 1E. Be made possible or probable by circumstances too, as in, he can hardly have meant that. What did he mean? What did he not mean? 1F. Be inherently able or designed to, as in everything that money can buy. 1G, be logically or axiologically able to, as in 2 plus 2 can also be written 3 plus 1. Sure it can. 1H, be enabled by law, agreement, or custom to. Number 2, have permission to, and this is used interchangeably with the word may, as in you can go now if you like. Uh, yes, I mean, you talk to teachers of kids, they may not say that this can be used interchangeably. Uh, they they, they want to make sure that you're saying the right words. But yes, in general, uh, yes, it, in normal, normal speak, you say can or may. Uh, okay, now we have some usage information to get more into the weeds of this whole can-may situation debacle. Can and may are most frequently interchangeable in senses denoting possibility because the possibility of one's doing something may depend on another's acquiescence. They have also become interchangeable in the sense denoting permission. The use of can to ask or grant permission has been common since the 19th century and is well established, although some commentators, yes, commentators, feel may is more appropriate in formal contexts. May is relatively rare in negative constructions, as in, mayn't is not common. Oh, the example, mayn't, is not common. Uh, and then cannot and can't are usual in such contexts. Maybe we should bring back mayn't. Okay, that was the, all the first form for can. Now we are on the second form for can. This is a noun from before the 12th century. Why do we have words that mean different things that are spelled and sound the same? One, a usually cylindrical receptacle. One uh, A, so that was one. Now we have one A, a vessel for holding liquids, specifically a drinking vessel. One B, 
a usually metal, typically cylindrical receptacle, cylindrical receptacle, usually with an open top, often with a removable cover, and sometimes with a spout or side handles, as for holding milk or trash. 1C, a container, as of tin plate, in which products, as perishable foods, are hermetically sealed for preservation until use. 1D, a jar for packing or preserving fruit or vegetables. 2, synonym is jail. Go into the can. That is not how I... I usually think of that phrase being used for the next one, which is 3A, synonym is toilet. And then 3B, the number one definition for the word bathroom. Number four, synonym is buttocks. How many different words are there that you can say buttocks? Somebody should come up with a list. Uh, Number five, synonym uh, is the number two definition for the word destroyer. It's a can? Okay. Can full is a noun. In the can is talking about of a film or videotape, and that means to uh, uh, completed and ready for release. The movie is in the can. Uh, This is from Middle English can, C-A-N-N-E, akin to the Old High German kana, or chana, C-H-A-N-N-A. Next is the third form of can, verb. I think it's uh, only transitive from 1859, 1A. To put in a can, preserve by sealing in airtight cans or jars, as in can tomatoes. Yes, people like to do lots of canning, especially people who happen to have gardens and uh, places that they grow things. 1B, to hit a golf shot into the cup. It went right in the can. 1C, to hit a shot in basketball. 2, to to discharge from employment. Number 3 is slang, and it means to put a stop or end to. Canner is a noun, the one who is doing the canning of all the tomatoes. And we have the fourth form of can. This is an abbreviation for 1, Cancelled or cancellation to canon, C A N N O N, and number three, canto. Next is another abbreviation. It is can, capital C A N, or capital C A N A D, and it's an abbreviation for Canada or Canadian. Uh, Next, we have Canaanite, capital C A N A A N I T E. Noun from 1535. A member of a Semitic people inhabiting ancient Palestine or Palestine and Phoenicia from about 3000 BC. Uh, They don't say like a year range. They're just saying like ever since 3000 BC, those are the people who have been inhabiting that area. And Canaanite is also an adjective. So this is from the Greek Canaanites. I think that's how it's possibly pronounced uh, with a K from the Hebrew. um, How do you pronounce this? Probably similar to Canaan. It is spelled capital K-E-N-A apostrophe A-N. There's an accent over the E. Uh, You know, but I probably got some of the the letters and it's not an apostrophe. It's something else. That's just what it looks like to me. Uh, Next, we have Canada balsam. Two words, noun from 1773, a viscid, yellowish to greenish oleoresin exudate. Wow, what what is with these words? I think it's a viscid. Uh, a viscid, yellowish to greenish oleoresin exudate of the balsam fir, F-I-R, that solidifies to a transparent mass and is used as a transparent cement, especially in microscopy. And the scientific name of this balsam fir is Abies balsam balsmea balsmea Abies balsmea, um, and it is from Canada. That's where it is. Fancy that! Surprise, surprise. Who knew? Next is Canada Day. Two words with capital first letters. Noun from 1950, July 1st, observed as a legal holiday in commemoration of the Proclamation of Dominion Status in 1867. So, 
why did it say that it's from 1950 when the Dominion proclamation 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 of Dominion status was in 1867? Uh, but hey, July 1st, in about six months or so, uh, go celebrate Canada Day. And then 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 then. And then our last word is Canada Goose with a capital C, lowercase g. Noun from 1731, the common wild goose of North America that is chiefly gray and brownish with black head and neck and a white patch running from the sides of the head under the throat. Got it like a chin strap. There's a picture of a Canada goose, a black and white drawing, and it looks just like a Canada goose should look, except it's black and white. They're mostly black and white, but they do have some brown. The scientific name is Branta canadensis. What's Branta mean in this case? Goose? It's the it's the goose genus? Uh, okay. So we had Can, 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 Canaanite, Canada Balsam, Canada Day, Canada Goose. Uh, let's see. There was something... Yeah, I think... Um, you know, it's this whole picking a word, word of the day, word of the episode is getting interesting because part of me wants to pick something that I could semi-easily come up with a song for, uh, but that's not always going to be the case, I don't think. Um, But I think I will pick can as the word of the episode because I can say something like, um, this usually metal, typically cylindrical receptacle, Man, what, what? these are not songs. They're not songs. They're just thoughts that are sort of sung. But I liked a cylindrical receptacle. Cylindrical receptacle, cylindrical receptacle is also called a can. Cylindrical receptacle, that's what it is. All right, whatever. Oh, thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, Word Nerds. Welcome to the Dictionary. We are at the end of page 178. Thank you for listening, all of you regular listeners. I love I love it. I love seeing the fact that there are actually people listening to this nonsense. Although, I'm very far ahead. You, None of you have heard my songs yet. They have not aired. Um, I'm recording this on December 13th, so far in advance. Um, yeah, so maybe once the songs start, I'm going to lose a lot of listeners. Let's see what happens. All right. Uh, Oh, yeah. And of course, I got to say the normal things, which is please rate and review. I sure would love some reviews. Uh, Subscribe, share with with the email me and all all those fun things. Um, It is it is very fun getting random messages every once in a while. Haven't had any for a while, but uh, it is it is cool getting some getting some contacts. I don't know what I'm saying. Moving on to Canada Thistle. Two words, T-H-I-S-T-L-E is thistle, noun from 1799, a European thistle with pinkish, purple, or white flowers naturalized as a weed in North America. And the scientific name is Circium or Circium events, 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 A-R-V-E-N-S-E. Not sure exactly how to pronounce that. Next is just Canadian with a capital C. Noun from 1568, a native or inhabitant of Canada. Canadian is also an adjective. There was a show back in the day where some not so smart character said, I found a Canadian penny and I have to go I have to go all the way to Canada to use it. And I I just enjoyed that very, very dumb joke. But I, I say that sometimes. Next is Canadian bacon. Two words, noun from 16, no, circa, see, I'm combining words in my brain, circa 1934. Bacon cut from the loin that has little fat and is cut into round or oblong pieces, or slices, I should say. Uh, here in America, I think we just call this ham, and in, in, in Canada, in Canada, they just call it bacon. But we have a different thing that's bacon. This is like the whole soccer football thing. Funny I should mention that because our next word is Canadian football, noun from 1895. A game resembling American football that is played on a turfed field between two teams of 12 players each. How is 
Canadian football different. Uh, next, we have Canadian French. Noun from 1816, the language of the French Canadians. The French Canadians speak Canadian French. Next is Canadian Lynx or Canada Lynx, and Lynx is L-Y-N-X. Noun from 1822, and we just have the C definition for the word Lynx. It's a cat. It's a feline. Uh, next we have Canai. Canai, or it could be pronounced canale, C-A-N-A-I-L-L-E. We'll say canai. Uh, This is a noun from 1661. Number one, synonyms are rabble and riffraff. Uh, Number two, synonym is proletarian. So this is a French word from Italian, canaglia, which is from the word cane, which means dog, I mean, it probably is like cane or something. It means dog from the Latin canis, which means, well, I think that's also dog. And there's more at the word hound. So these dogs are some rabble and some riffraff. Next is canal, C-A-N-A-L, first form, noun from the 15th century. One, a tubular anatomical passage or channel, and a synonym is duct, D-U-C-T. Number two. Synonyms are channel and watercourse. Three, an artificial waterway for navigation or for draining or irrigating land. Four, any of various faint narrow lines on the planet Mars seen through telescopes and once thought by some to be canals built by Martians. This doesn't seem like a definition that should be in here. They're still just regular canals, channels, Just like we have here in America, America, my God, uh, here on Earth, uh, why do the Mars canals have to be separated into their own thing? I don't know. That seems kind of odd to me. Um, This is from the Latin canalis, which is pipe or channel, from cana, which means reed, and there's more at the word cane. Second form of canal, this is a verb. From 1793, only transitive. To construct a canal through or across. Next is canaliculus. Canaliculus. I think that's how it is pronounced. C-A-N-A-L-I-C-U-L-U-S. I think every single letter alternates between consonants and vowels. Canaliculus. Noun. From circa 1839. A minute canal in a bodily structure. Canalicular is an adjective. This is Latin diminutive of canalis. So it's just a very tiny canal. What sort of canals in the body are we talking about? Veins and arteries and capillaries? Would those be considered canaliculi? I don't know. Or there's something other, something else, other things. Next we have canalization. Noun from 1844. One an act or instance of canalizing. Two, a system of channels. Next, we have canalize. Oh, my voice is starting to go. Verb from 1855, starting with transitive. 1A, to provide with a canal or channel. 1B, to make into or similar to a canal. Two, to provide with an outlet, especially to direct into preferred channels. And here we go with intransitive. Here we go. One, to flow in or into a channel. Two, to establish new channels. Next is, you could pronounce this a couple ways. Most people say it canape, uh, but some people like to say canopy, but you would say it canopy. Uh, C-A-N-A-P-E, and there's an accent over the E. I will say canape. Uh, this is a noun from 1863. An appetizer consisting of a piece of bread or toast or a cracker topped with a savory spread as caviar or cheese and compared to the synonym hors d'oeuvre. I'm not going to spell that for you. It's weird because it's French. All things French are weird. That was a joke. Uh, But no, I'll spell it when we get to that in the... What letter does it start with? H. This is... Huh. This is a French word, and it literally means sofa. Sofa? What is the bread, the sofa for the cheese? 
The cheese is hanging out on the sofa made of bread. I want to hang out on a sofa made out of bread. Um, and this is from Middle Latin canopium, canopium or canapeum, uh, which is a mosquito net. And there's more at the word canopy with a Y. And that makes sense. But uh, why? How does that relate to a sofa? And then how is that related to this food? I don't know. But I do like the idea of uh, cheese hanging out on a sofa of bread or toast or cracker. Next is canard. You could also take off the D sound uh, and just say canard. C-A-N-A-R-D. Noun from 1851. 1A. A false or unfounded report or story. Especially a fabricated report. 1B. A groundless rumor or or belief. Two, an airplane with horizontal stabilizing and control surfaces in front of supporting surfaces. Also, a small airfoil in front of the wing of an aircraft that can that can increase the aircraft's performance. Uh, this is French canard, and it literally means duck in sense number one. One, uh, yeah, okay, interesting. Uh, from the Middle French, what is this? A phrase? Vendre de canards à matois. Uh, that means to cheat. Literally, uh, to half-sell ducks. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it's all about lying. Next is canary. Noun from 18, 1584. One, a canary island's usually sweet wine similar to Madeira. That sounds tasty. Two, a lively 16th century court dance. Three, a small finch of the Canary Islands that is usually greenish to yellow and is kept as a cage bird and singer. But you got to let it free. Uh, the scientific name is Serenus Canarius and also Serenus Canaria. Canarius or Canaria? Take your pick. Number four is slang, and it has the number two definition for the word informer. Uh, and then this is just from uh, Old Spanish, Canario, from Islas, Islas Canarias, which is the Canary Islands. Next is Canary Seed, two words, noun from 1597. Seed of a Canary Islands grass, used as food for cage birds. And the scientific, scientific name is Phalaris canariensis. And then lastly, we have canary yellow, two words, noun from 1853, a light to a moderate or vivid yellow. Well, so I had a thought uh, that instead of maybe picking, writing, singing a little song about the word of the episode, maybe I'll just try and do a little song somewhere in the episode. Uh, because, you know, sometimes there's just a couple of words or a phrase that just sort of works well to be sung out somehow. I, I came across a couple here today, and I don't remember where it is, but that's okay. Oh, I like to rabble and riffraff. So we'll, I, I guess for today, we'll just pick uh, canai or canail as the word of the episode. Um, rabble and riffraff. The rabble and the riffraff are canais. Oh, man, this, I, this is getting worse and worse, I think. Uh, rabble, 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 rabble. Uh, who says rubble? Rubble, rubble, rubble. That's uh, some cartoon character. Rubble, rubble. I can't think of it right now. Rabble, rabble, rabble. Riff, raff, riff, raff. Can I? Okay, we're done. We have finished page 178. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. <laughs> I just had a funny thought. Okay, we'll maybe come back to that. Um, this is the Dictionary Podcast. It's called the Dictionary and it's a podcast. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, uh, what do we need to say? I think that is about it. We just want to get into the words. That is what you're here for. I don't know about you, but I think this podcast is pretty darn great. Okay. Uh, the first word. Oh, I sh- should I warn you? Nah. I guess I just did. There's a word coming up uh, that's, a, that's a, not a good one. Okay, the first word in this episode is canasta, C-A-N-A-S-T-A. Noun from 1948, one, a form of rummy. Ooh, it's time for cards. 
a form of rummy using two full decks in which players or partnerships try to meld groups of three or more cards of the same rank and score bonuses for seven card melds. Um, okay. I think maybe I played Canasta once with a friend of mine. Why did he know how to play it? This seems like an old person's game, doesn't it? I want to say Canasta or something like that. Uh, and then number two, a meld of seven cards of the same rank in Canasta. Uh, maybe I should learn how to play this. So Canasta is Spanish and it literally means basket. Uh, so how does basket relate to this game? Who were the people who made up this game based on a basket? Let's make a card game based on a basket. Uh, and uh, let's call it basket. What, 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 what happened there? I made a card I made up a card game once. I don't think it was very good, but uh, it was fun to sort of figure out how to make a game. Uh, and then my friend and I also invented a card game. Who knew? Boy, this is going to be a long episode. My friend and I also invented a card game called Cappuccino. I do not know why we called it that. And uh, I think it was actually really, really clever because he did most of the work. Shout out to you, Rolf. And uh, he trounced me. I mean, he he knew how to strategize that game. I was dumb, dumb kid. Um, okay, next is Kank, C-A-N-C. It is an abbreviation for canceled. Next is Can Can. Just one word, Can Can. Noun from 1848, a woman's dance of French origin characterized by high kicking, usually while holding up the front of a full ruffled shirt. I mean, that is exactly what you picture when you think of a can-can, right? I mean, they, they just nailed that one. Good job, dictionary. Uh, you, can't, you can't see the word can-can and not think of the song and that image all at once. That's what I think. Next is the word cancel. First form verb from the 14th century. Transitive is first. I assume there is also intransitive. Although, maybe not. You never know. Oh, there it is. Uh, okay, 1A for transitive. To destroy the force, effectiveness, or validity of. Synonym is annul. Uh, as in, cancel a magazine subscription. Annul that magazine subscription. It was like we were never married. Uh, also is in a canceled check. 1B, to bring to nothingness. Synonym is destroy. I shall cancel you. 1C, to match in force or effect. Synonym is offset. And this is often used with the word out, as in his irritability canceled out his natural kindness. That is a quote from Osbert Sitwell. Oh my God, I love that name. Osbert Sitwell at your service. Uh, his irritability canceled out his natural kindness. Uh, 1D, to call off usually without expectation of conducting or performing at a later time, as in cancel a football game. 2A, to, which line are we on? To mark or strike out for deletion. 2B, synonyms are omit and delete. 3A, to remove a common divisor from numerator and denominator. I feel like that's some good good third grade math right in there. Uh, 3B, to remove equi uh, blah, 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 equivalence, to remove equivalence on opposite sides of an equation or account. 4, to deface, uh, some parentheses, to deface, especially with a set of ink lines so as to invalidate for reuse. Uh, and then a postage or revenue stamp is an example. And then intransitive says to neutralize each other's strengths or effect. And a synonym is counterbalance. Cancelable or can this oh cancelable with one L or two L's is an adjective, and canceller uh, also one or two L's is a noun. So if you ever wondered, are there one L? Is there one L or two L in those words, which I most likely have? because uh, I get confused about those things all the time. You can uh, go to sleep nice, uh, well tonight, uh, that knowing that you can use either 1L or 2L. Super important stuff. Oh, this is from Latin, cancellare. I'm going to assume that means to cancel. No, to make like a lattice. Couldn't have been more different from what I thought. 
uh, the diminutive of cancer or can- cancer is lattice, probably an alternative of con- car care, which means prison. Uh, yeah, I guess that sort of makes sense. If you're canceling something, you're putting it in prison. Wow, that is a leap. Okay, the second form of cancel is a noun from 1806. One, the synonym is cancellation. 2A, a deleted part or passage. 2B, one, a leaf containing matter to be deleted. 2B, two, a new leaf or slip sub substituted for matter already printed. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to any of that. Next is the word cancellation with one L or two. Noun from 1535. One, the act or an instance of canceling. Two, something as a hotel room or a ticket made available by the canceling of an agreement. Three, a mark made to cancel something as a postage stamp. Would that mark happen to be an X? Possibly, maybe. Uh, Cancelis is next. Uh, You could also pronounce it uh, cancelis. Cancelis or cancelis. Uh, It is an adjective from circa 1839. It is talking about bone, and it means having a porous structure. Well, I think bone is somewhat porous already, or maybe, I mean, everything is porous, right? Uh, But why a porous structure? It's a cancelis. I don't know. Maybe it's related to cancer. So this is from New Latin cangeli, which means intersecting osseous plates and bars in cancellous bone. Still don't really know what cancellous bone is. And next is, uh, this is the one that is unfortunate, but I don't think all the definitions are unfortunate. So that's good. It is the word cancer, noun from the 14th century. One is capitalized. 1A, a northern zodiacal, zodiacal, is that how you say the word? Zodiacal? Zodiacal? I don't know. A northern zodiacal constellation between Gemini and Leo. 1B1, the fourth sign of the zodiac in astrology. And then it says to see the zod, now I can't even say the word, zodiac table. I wanted to say zodiacal, zodiacal, but I couldn't even think of how to say it, so I screwed it all up. 1B2, one born under the sign of cancer. That is not me. Number two uh, has a different etymology. 2A, a malignant tumor of potentially unlimited growth that expands locally by invasion and systematically by metastasis. I think that's how you say that word. Yeah. 2B, an abnormal bodily state marked by such tumors. 3, something evil or malignant that spreads destructively, as in the cancer of hidden resentment of crown of what oh uh, wrong line the cancer of hidden resentment that is from the irish digest the cancer of hidden resentment what were they talking about don't you want to know maybe we could we should dig up this quote from the irish digest and see what they were talking about 4a an enlarged tumor-like plant growth as that of crown gal crown gal crown gull I don't know. 4B, a plant disease marked by such growths. Cancerous is an adjective and cancerously is an adverb. Uh, So I wonder why they named the constellation. uh, Why why did they name it cancer? Uh, Oh, oh, I know. That's why we talk about the etymology. Uh, So this is Latin. Would that be actually, would you pronounce it can care in Latin? Because I think the C's before an E or an I are a K sound. Okay, not sure. If you have an opinion on that, let me know. Uh, But I'm going to say cancer. It literally means crab, and it is akin to the Greek karkinos, which means crab or cancer. Uh, And so that's what the constellation is. It is a crab, and so it means cancer. That probably was super obvious, so I don't know why it took me so long to get there, but I got there. Next is cancerous. No, Uh, Cancerian, that's what I thought. Cancerian or Cancerian, with a capital C, noun from 1911. By the way, the capital C is at the beginning of the word, not the one in the middle, because that's not where we put our capital letters, although maybe we should start doing that. Uh, We just have the 1B2 definition for the word cancer, uh, which is somebody born under the sign of cancer. Okay, you already said it, so yeah, no need to rewrite it. That would be silly. Next we have our last word. It is... Candila, candela, uh, or candela. 
Candela, can, Candela, or Candela. C-A-N-D-E-L-A, if you couldn't figure that out. Noun from 1949. This looks fun. Whoa. Uh, the base unit of luminous intensity in the international system of units that is equal to the luminous intensity in a given direction of a source which email, no, email, emails, emits, wow, I was reading too fast, uh, which emits monochromatic radiation of frequency 540 times 10 to the 12th hertz. That's a lot of hertz and has a radiant intensity in that direction of 1 over 683. I think that's what it says. I feel so old. I'm holding up the book differently and squinting a little bit. Uh, I'm going to have to read read this one again. Stand by. Uh, 163 watt per hour solid angle. Okay, let's try that one again. The base unit of luminous intensity in the international system of units that is equal to the luminous intensity in a given direction of a source which emits monochromatic radiation of frequency, big number, and has a radiant intensity in that direction of 1 683rd watt. That's 1600. How do you say that? Watt per unit solid angle. It is abbreviated to just CD, called also just candle. That was intense. Okay, so we had canasta, can, 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 uh, cancel, cancellation, cancellus, cancer, the big C, cancerian, and candela, candela. Uh, you know what? I think that candela one is not uh, as complicated as they made it seem to be. I think it's, you could probably describe it simpler. Anyway. Uh, I, I, you know, the obvious one might be to pick cancer as the word of the episode. Um, I don't know. That's obviously a thing that sucks. And, uh, uh, I don't know, eat healthy and exercise to maybe not get it, but who knows? We're probably all going to get it. Uh, mostly, but let's try not to. Let's just try. Just, just put a little bit of effort into that. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to pick uh, Can Can because then I can sing Can 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 You Do The Can 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 It Do the... I don't know the words to the song. Thank you very much for listening to this insanity of a podcast. Uh, this, this has been Spencer Dispensing Information because that's my name. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Um, if I have done my math correctly, today is January 14th. I have no idea what's on January 14th, but I just wanted to say January 14th. So if today is your birthday or your anniversary or some other special day to you, your dog's grandfather's birthday, uh, go do something. Uh, otherwise, do something anyway. Um, okay, just do what you want to do. The first word in this episode is candelabra, C-A-N-D-E-L. It's not like the candle that with the wick, with the wax. That's, a, I think, D-L-E. This one is C-A-N-D-E-L-A-B-R-A. A uh, Canada noun from 1805, a branched candlestick or lamp with several lights. I feel like I am going to be getting bifocals at some point before this podcast is done. Hoo-wee. Uh, this is, that's good. Okay, next is candelabrum, noun from, uh, 1811, and it's just, we just have the synonym candelabra, literally what we just read. It's the same thing. Candelabra, candelabrum. Uh, next is cadent, no, candent, adjective from 1577, glowing from or as if from great heat. Glowing, it is, so, that, there's a name for that. When you see your electric stove light up light up from the heat, it is glowing. That means it is candent. Uh, when you are uh, melting glass to blow into something, which I think is very cool, or metal, uh, it glows, and that is candent. Don't forget that. Next is candescence. Noun from circa 1864. A candescent state glowing whiteness. The, the, it's the candescence that's coming off of it. Uh, next is candescent, adjective from 1808, glowing or dazzling from or as if from great heat. I feel like those are very similar, aren't they? Basically the same thing. Next is C and F. The C and the F are capitalized in C and F. Abbreviation for cost and freight. 
like a freight train or a freight elevator. Next is candid, adjective from mm, 1606. One synonym is white, as in candid flames. That's super poetic. Uh, Where else would you use that word in that context? Number two, free from bias, prejudice, or malice. Synonym is fair. That's what everybody should be. Everybody should be candid. As in, a candid observer. 3A, marked by honest, sincere expression. As in, a candid discussion. Yes, let us have a candid discussion about the state of the world today. That's what we do here every day on the dictionary. 3B, indicating or suggesting sincere honesty and absence of deception, as in her candid face. It was just sincerely honest. 3C, disposed to criticize severely. Synonym is blunt, as in candid critics. Oh, you you gotta be a candid critic, but that could be harsh, right? 4, relating to or being photography being photography of subjects acting naturally or spontaneously without being posed. Candid photos. We all love candid photos, don't we? Especially when we look good, but if we don't look good, we hate them. Uh, I don't really do it, but I do like taking candid photos. There's something about that. Capturing that moment when they don't know it. Uh, Synonym says, see the word frank. Yes. Can I be frank? No, you're Spencer. Candidly is an adverb. Candidness is a noun. Uh, It is from the Latin candidus, which means bright or white, from candere or candire, which means to shine or glow, uh, akin to, I think that's Welsh, is the W, the word can, which means white, from Sanskrit candati, which means it shines. So who would, I never would have thought candid as being shiny and white and glowing, but uh, okay. Next is candida. Candida. I, I want to put a little more I sound in the candi part. De. Um, but the pronunciation guy is just... Uh, oh, God, I can't talk. The pronunciation guide is spelled... Uh, the, those two syllables are spelled exactly the same way. But I would say candida, not candada. It's candada. That's a terrible word. Candida. Uh, it's, it's like a worse, worse uh, Canada. Canada. Noun from in 1939, any of a genus of parasitic fungi that resemble yeasts occur especially in the mouth, vagina, and intestinal tract where they are usually benign but can become pathogenic and have been grouped with the imperfect fungi but are now often placed with the the, the ascompicete. Uh, there, it goes over this. I, whatever. Um, Especially one causing thrush. Okay. So the genus name of this thing, this fungi, is Candida. uh, And then the scientific name of that one that causes thrush is Candida albicans. Uh, This sounds pretty terrible. I mean, I've heard the word, but I never really knew what it was. So I don't think it's okay. It's a thing. Uh, And I hope you nah, nah, nobody has to deal with that. Uh, Why did I say nah, nah? Candidal is an adjective. Next is candidacy. Candidacy. Again, candidacy. But some people say candidacy. Okay, noun from 1848. The state of being a candidate. As in, he is expect- expecting... He is expected to announce his candidacy. For what? Candidate is next, or candidate, noun from 1600, 1A, one that aspires to or is nominated or qualified for an office, membership, or award, as in a, uh, a okay, yep, that's the word, a candidate for governor. Uh, next is 1B, one likely or suited to undergo or be chosen for something specified, as in a candidate for surgery. I sure was that a couple of times. Two, a student in the process of meeting final requirements for a degree. All right, this is from Latin candidatus. Candidatus, which means clothed in white. From candidus, which means white. The white toga torn. The white toga worn by candidates for office in ancient Rome. It would be so crazy to go back to that time and see what it was really like. Because... We, we have no frame of ref- reference 
for what that life was like. That's so crazy. Next is candidature. Noun from 1848, a very clunky word. Uh, it is chiefly British. Synonym is candidacy. Next is candid camera. Noun from 1929. I feel like we're all on candid camera. A camera used to record subjects in a natural, spontaneous, or unposed manner. Also, something likened to a camera used in such a manner. Candid camera with a hyphen is an adjective. My mouth is getting smacky. Good thing we're almost done. Candidiasis is next. Noun from 1951. Infection with or disease caused by a candida. Called also monoliasis. Monoliasis. It's almost like Mona Lisa. Uh, Okay, next is candied. Adjective from 1577. One, encrusted or coated with sugar. Mmm, as in candied fruits. Two, baked with sugar or syrup until translucent, as in candied yams. I think this is how I want to go out. Baked with sugar or syrup. Oh, we just watched Elf last night. Oh my God, that is a, such a silly movie. Uh, he pulls syrup out of from his sleeve and he gets a giant jug of syrup for, <laughs> for Christmas and he pours it on his spaghetti. Oh, God, it sounded like me. Okay, next, and our last word is candle. C-A-N-D-L-E, first form. Second form will be in the next episode. This is a noun from before the 12th century. One, a usually molded or dipped mass of wax or tallow containing a wick that may be burned as to give light, heat, or scent, or for the celebration of votive or votive purposes. What are votive purposes? Seriously. Uh, there's votives. I know those are candles. Uh, but what are votive purposes? Uh, okay. So that is a candle. We all know what a candle is. They're great. Number two, something resembling a candle in shape or use, as in a sulfur candle for fumigating. Three, required effort, expense, or trouble, usually used in the phrase, not worth the candle. Oh, I have to use that. Required effort, expense, or trouble. It's not worth the, the required effort. I don't want to do that because I'm lazy. Uh, and then number four, the synonym is candela. So we had candelabra, candelabrum, candelabra, a candelabrum. Maybe, yeah, maybe I should just change this to a song somewhere in the episode. Doesn't have to be at the end. Doesn't have to be uh, the word, the word of the episode, which I think I already said. But it's just, it can be anywhere. Sometimes you just have to sing something. All right, so that that one counts. Uh, candent, candescence, candescent, C and F. Wow, that was like a lifetime ago. Candid, candid, uh, candidacy, candidate, candidature, candid camera, candid diocese, candied, and candle. Well, I'm going to pick candid as the word of the episode because it sounds great and it's white and glowing. And uh, we should be more candid with ourselves and with other people. And uh, candid photos are great. Or video. But not in a mean way. This is in a nice way. That's all I got to say today. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer uh, dispensing information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. Uh, Apologies off the bat, right off the bat. Uh, My mouth is very smacky, so I may have to get some water in the middle. Um, You know, maybe uh, halfway through, maybe at the word candle pin. Let's take a drink of water. Okay. Uh, The first word is the second form of candle. It is a verb from 1879. I swear I need to do this during the morning times when it's sunny out because I need some more light in this room because my eyes are getting so bad and it's a little too dark. It's nighttime now. Don't record at the nighttime because it's dark out there. You need more light. Okay, this is to examine by holding between the eyes and a light. Candle. Especially to test in this way for staleness, blood clots, fertility, and growth. Uh, and then this is, the example is to test eggs. Yes, have not have you seen that? They hold up a candle on the other side of an egg, or they used to. They probably still do somewhere, because you can see inside. You can see inside and figure out what's going on. That's cool. Candler is a noun. Next is candleberry. 
Uh, it's a, it was a berry that you can burn, a berry that looks like a candle. Noun, those were dumb. Nouns from circa 1730. A wax myrtle, also a hayberry. And the scientific name for the first one is Myrica serifera. Myrica serifera. And then the hayberry scientific name is Myrica pensylvanica. Pens- it's like Pennsylvania. Pennsylvanica. That's the candleberry. Maybe they're in Pennsylvania. Next is candlefish, noun from 1866. A very oily, anadromous marine food fish. I'm not going to comment on that. Of the smelt family that occurs along the North Pacific coast, called also Yulichan, or maybe Yulikan. The scientific name is Thalicthus Pacificus. It's probably in the Pacific. That's all I can figure out from that. Next is candle holder, one word, noun from 1846. Synonym is candlestick, but not yet. First is candle light, noun from before the... The 12th century, 1A, the light of a candle. 1B, a soft artificial light. 2, the time for lighting candles. Synonym is twilight. It's candlelight. Dinner time. No, I don't know if I've ever had dinner by candle, except for maybe Passover. You, you make a point of lighting the candles, I feel like, right? Well, Hanukkah too, but that's not, you're not having dinner at that time. Um, I mean, I guess some people do. If you do, that's cool. Next is a candle lighter, noun from the 15th century. One, one who lights the candles for a ceremony. Uh, Hanukkah, when we were growing up, you know, there was always a big deal made of who's going to light it first because all the kids want to light the candles. It's so cool to light the candles. Uh, so does, do you go by age? Is it random? It's a lot to think about in the moment. Oh, am I... I'm older, but you figure out ahead of time. That's the smart way. And then you stand in that order. Oh, memories. Okay, so that was uh, the number one. Number two, a long-handled implement with a taper and a candle snuffer that is used for the ceremonial lighting and extinguishing of candles. I guess sometimes you have to ceremonially extinguish candles for some particular reason. I don't know what those are. Next is candle lit or candle lighted, adjective from 1868, illuminated by candlelight, as in a candle lit dinner. That's the more better word for that phrase I said before. Next is candle miss with a capital C. Oh, it's a good thing with the mouths getting dry. We're getting there soon. Noun from before the 12th century, February 2nd, observed as a church festive a church fest festival, why couldn't that work? A church festival in commemoration of the presentation of Christ in the temple and the purification of the Virgin Mary. Uh, for some reason, my brain wanted to say festive, but that's not what those letters were. So I, and it was going on to the second line, I had to look back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Finally, we got there. We did it together. Um, it's, a, it's a candle and a feast. Uh, is from the candles blessed and carried in celebration of the feast. It's Candlemas. So close to Christmas. There must be a meaning to having this M-A-S at the end of your holiday name. What does that mean? Are we going to get to the suffix mass? Maybe. Not for a while. Why am I getting so excited? Let's move on to candle nut. A noun from circa 1836. The oily seed of a tropical tree. It is of the Spurge family, used locally to make candles and commercially as a source of oil. Also, this tree, right here, this tree. The scientific name is Aluritis Molucana, something like that. Oh, it's, it's, it's a water drinking time. Hold on. Oh yeah, this one doesn't need to be tipped. It's got a straw built in. Yeah, I got a built-in straw in my water bottle. Next is the word candle pin, noun from 1901. A slender bowling pin tapering toward top and bottom. Two, a bowling game using candle pins and a smaller ball than that used in 
10 pins. Uh, so it's different pins and a smaller ball. Yeah, I think I've seen this like mini bowling. Uh, I want to play this game. I've, I've seen people play old bowling in movies. I'm like, I want to do that. That seems so fun. Uh, next is Candle Power. Oh, speaking of bowling, have you played the 100 pin bowling in, uh, what is it, Mario uh, Island? No. Uh, Esp- the Wii Sports. Wii Sports. Wii Sports. Oh boy, that 100 pin bowling. If anybody has the ability to make 100 pin bowling, call me up because I need to do that like yesterday. Okay, next is Candle Power. Noun from 1869. It's luminous intensity expressed in candela- candelas. That failed miserably. Also, just the synonym candela. Luminous intensity expressed in candelas. That is candle power. Next is candle snuffer. Noun from 1552. An implement for snuffing candles that consists of a small hollow cone attached to a handle. I think my mom has the same candle snuffer that she probably got when she was a kid. Although, who's giving children gifts of a candle snuffer? Uh, That seems odd. Give your lover the gift of a candle snuffer. Uh, Yeah, so we've had the same... I think this is probably the same one because it works. It's just metal. That thing is probably 300 years old. Uh, Okay, next is candlestick. Noun from before the 12th century. A holder with a socket for a candle. Candle wick is next. Noun from before the 12th century. One, the wick of a candle. Two, a soft cotton embroidery yarn. Also, embroidery made with this yarn, usually in tufts. People make art with the same material that they use for candle wicks? Is that what I'm reading? Next is candle wood. Noun from 1712. One, any of several trees or shrubs as ocotillo. Chiefly of resinous character. Two, slivers of resinous wood burned for light. Ah, uh, you burn the wood and it creates the light and it becomes candle wood. Next is can do. We got that can do attitude. It is two words with a hyphen. Adjective from 1945. Man, most of you probably think I am so dumb. And you would be right. Characterized by eager willingness to accept and meet challenges, as in a can-do attitude. And can-do-ism is also what I got. Let's, I, oh, no. Uh, that, the can-do-ism is a noun, but uh, fun fact, it is, there's two hyphens. I've never seen a multi-hyphened, hyphenated word like that. They're, they're very rare, very rare, I feel like. There's probably more than I think. To and fro, is that uh, does that have two hy- hyphens? But what's weird about this one is that the third section is ism. That's a suffix. That should just be at the end of the do. Doism. It's one word, right? Why is it hyphenated? Can doism. These are the things that I think about. Next is candor or candor. Candor. My name is candor. Noun from the 14th century. 1A, synonyms are whiteness and brilliance. 1B, this is what happens when this type of brain reads the dictionary. This is what you asked for. You asked for this. Uh, 1B uh, is obsolete. It is unstained purity. 2, freedom from prejudice or malice. Synonym is fairness. 3 is archaic, and the synonym is kind kindliness it's not kindliness it's kindliness four unreserved honest or sincere expression synonym is forthrightness forthrightness yes that's where wow that's a lot of t's and h's in weird places i got all my t's and my h's they're in weird places Mm, not sure where that one was going Uh, As in, the candor with which he acknowledged a weakness in his own case. That is a quote from Aldous Huxley. Oh, I know who Aldous Huxley is. He's a sci-fi writer? I know who he is, but my brain isn't pinpointing that. I think he might be a sci-fi writer, though. Next is candor with an O-U-R, candor. It is a chiefly chiefly British variation of candor without the U. Uh, Next is 
our last word of this episode, CNW with caps, abbreviation for country and western. Country and western. I was sort of singing some country and western in that other one. My T's and my H's in all the wrong places. Something like that. I got my T's and my H's in the wrong places. Got my T's and my H's in the wrong places. It's such a good thing that my wife is out. Um, She is dropping off things for her friends for the holidays because she is a good person. Uh, and here I am reading this book. So uh, I got to read them now. Candle, Candleberry, Candlefish, Candle Holder, Candlelight, Candle Lighter, Candle Lit, Candle Miss. It's a weird name for a holiday. Candle Nut. Candle pin, candle power, candle snuffer, candle stick, candle wick, candle wood, can do, candor, candor, C and W. Oh, C and W really threw things off. Uh, candle snuffer sounds like the name of a weird dwarf or creature, uh, not a creature, uh, you know, one of those Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, and we just learned about the Icelandic 13 Father Christmases, and they all have weird names like that, like Door Licker and Spoon Licker. I'm serious. This is not a joke. This is true life. I could not make this up. Uh, but Candle Snuffer sounds like one of them. So I'm going to pick Candle Snuffer as the word of the episode. It is the 14th Icelandic Father Christmas Yule Lad, something like that. And watch out for their cat. Uh... So Candle Snuffer, I think I sang enough songs. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Wow, I forgot what to do there for a second. Uh, Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the podcast called The Dictionary. We are at the end of page 179. Uh, It is the end of the page, so I am legally required to say... Uh, please rate and review this podcast, and uh, especially on Apple and wherever else is fine too. If you so like, I guess, uh, subscribe. Why wouldn't you already be subscribed? Um, what else are the things that I say? Uh, you can message me, and um, I think that's it. We're just going to get real quiet here for a second. Okay, that's good. Yeah, do all those things. Okay, the first word is candy. Uh, This is the first form noun from the 15th century. What do you define as candy? Uh, People have such different definitions for their own candy. Is it a a fruity hard candy? Is it a Snickers bar? You know, that's up to you. You do what you do you. Uh, Okay, number one, crystallized sugar formed by boiling down sugar syrup. Yep, sounds good. 2A, a confection made with sugar and often flavoring and filling. Oh, no promises that I won't be drinking water in the middle of this episode. 2B, a piece of such confection. 3, something that is pleasant or appealing in a light or frivolous way, as in visual candy. Who doesn't love some visual candy? Or aural candy? Would that, is that this? Or what's the uh, the scent one? Is uh, olfactory olfactoral candy? Hmm. Candy is an adjective. It is from. Um, I'm reading. I'm reading. So reading. So reading. We're only a day away. Uh, this is from Old French sucre, which means sugar. Um, I think there was another sugar candy, sugar candy. Uh, and then from the Arabic, candy, which means candied. Uh, also, kand, which means crystallized sugar. Kand, with a Q, means crystallized sugar. Okay, second form of candy, verb, from uh, the 1533. That good old 1533. Uh, transitive is first. One, to encrust in or coat with sugar, specifically to cook as fruit or fruit peel, in a heavy syrup until glazed. Two, to make attractive. Synonym is sweeten. Three, to crystallize into sugar. Intransitive says, to become coated or encrusted with sugar crystals, become crystallized into sugar. I read that fast because I need to drink some water. This is real life. You need water. Do it. Drink it. Don't complain. 
Uh, next is Candy Floss, noun from 1951. Number one, synonym, no, it is British. Synonym is cotton candy. Candy, I just think, I don't know why, but I think that's just a funny name, Candy Floss. Uh, but they're not wrong. You, have you seen cotton candy made? It's like floss. Uh, number two is usually Candy Floss, one word. Uh, I should have said this is two words. It is British and something attractive but insubstantial. It is Candy Floss. Oh, I hate this podcast. It is candy floss. Next is candy striper. Two words, noun from 1963. A teenage volunteer worker at a hospital. Why are they called candy stripers? It is from the striped uniform worn suggesting the stripes on some sticks of candy. So they were made to look like a piece of candy? What what candy would this be? Uh, Did they get to choose? I don't know. Just, it seems odd that they were made to look like a piece of candy. It's a very weird costume. Uh, Once I had a person in a jelly belly costume. Yes, a giant red jelly bean. uh, Racing behind me while riding go-karts in a mount on a mountain in New Zealand. That was a very weird experience. And we have photos and video, I think. Okay, next is Candy Tuft, noun from uh, 1629. Any of a genus of plants of the mustard family cultivated for their white, pink, or purple flowers. Uh, It is from Candida, Candida, no, Candia, which uh, means Crete, Greek island, that is one of the Greek islands, uh, plus the English word tuft. Why it's tuft? It looks like a tuft of something. The, the genus name is uh, Iberus or Iberus, probably Iberus. Uh, okay, next is the first form of cane, noun from mm, the 14th century. One a one, a hollow or pithy and usually slender and flexible jointed stem, as of a reed. One a two, any of various slender woody stems, especially an elongated flowering or fruiting stem. As of a rose. As of a rose. Usually arising directly from the ground. 1B. Any of various tall woody grasses or reeds. As 1B1. Any of a genus of coarse grasses. And the genus name is Arundinaria. Arundinaria. Why am I so fascinated by words? I don't know. Uh, 1B2. Synonym is sugarcane. 1B3, synonym is sorghum, S-O-R-G-H-U-M. Number two, cane dressed for use as 2A, a cane walking stick. I hope I never need a cane walking stick, but I probably will. It's a very good chance I will. Uh, Broadly, the synonym walking stick. 2B, a cane or rod for flogging. Ooh, that would be painful. Uh, yeah. Uh, 1C, synonym is rattan, R-A-T-T-A-N. I think that is how you pronounce that word. Especially split rattan for wicker work or basket work. Yes, rattan. Uh, 3, a tiny glass rod used in decorative glass work, as in millefiori and paperweights. Millefiori. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but that's a fun word to say. Uh, this is um, from some stuff. Akkadian kamu, I think that's what it says, which means read, and the Hebrew kanech, kanech, something like that. You know what? I think it's time for water again. Okay, second form of cane. This is a verb, transitive verb from 1662. One, to beat with a cane, as in he sat in a professor's, uh, professor's chair. He sat in a professor's chair and caned sophomores for blowing spitballs. That is from H. L. Mencken. Well, no, they shouldn't have been blowing spitballs, but that is a real rough punishment. I mean, jeez. Uh, two, to weave or furnish with cane, as in, cane the seat of a chair. There is that great episode where Ron Swanson, we're talking about Parks and Rec, obviously, uh, Ron Swanson is describing how to make a chair, I think, or maybe recane a chair uh, during their um, 
overnight fundraiser telethon thing. Ah, oh, what a, what a great character. Next is Cane Break, noun from 1769, a thicket of cane. Next is Caner, noun from 1868, one who canes chairs. Ron Swanson is a caner. Next is Canescent, Canescent. Why did I say it twicent? Ah, no. Adjective from circa 1828, growing white, whitish, or hoary. Uh, H-O-A-R-Y. I believe that is pronounced hoary, but it is not the hoary that some of you may be thinking of. Uh, yeah, especially having a fine grayish white pubescence. Well, now this isn't helping whatsoever. Yeah, I think it's the word pubescence. Why, why did this go in this direction? Is it me? Is it the words? Anyway, the synonym, uh, no, as in candescent leaves. So they're getting white, grayish white, and that's that. Uh, this is from, um, uh, canere, which means to be gray or be white, uh, from canis, which means white, hoary. There's that word again. I'm sure it's not as weird as I think it is, but I don't think I've seen that word. There's more at the word hare, H-A-R-E, like the rabbit. Uh, well, I guess they can be a grayish white. Maybe that's related to hair. I don't know. Moving on to cane sugar, just the, probably the best plant in the world, really. Noun from 1766, sugar from sugar cane. It is cane sugar. Mm. Ooh, I have a I have a um, a scar because of cane sugar, or I guess more specifically sugar cane. Uh, I you could get it at the grocery store. You could get like a 10 inch piece of it. And finally, I think my mom let me get one. I was in high school. I was, you know, high school kids probably shouldn't be asking for sugar cane. Whatever. That's me. Uh, and I had a new, like, little Swiss Army knife. So I was cutting a piece off for somebody. And uh, and the Swiss Army knife slipped or something happened. Maybe I had it backwards. I don't know. I was a dumb kid. And uh, it cut my knuckle. And I got two stitches. And that was a good story. Oh, and so it begins. Or no, it probably started uh, almost two years ago. Uh, yeah, I tell bad stories. But that's okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I got two, sti two stitches. You're making this worse now. Yep, got two stitches. Uh, next is caneware. A uh, noun from 1856. A buff or yellowish stoneware. And it, this is from its color, caneware. Next is, there's no, there's no color in that, those words, though. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, next is canicular. Canicular, canicule, canicule, canicula. Ha, 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 ha. Is it just me? That, that's, that's what you think of, right? Uh, this is an adjective from the 12th century of or relating to the dog days. I thought it said those dog days, and I just thought that would, that the dictionary would never write something like that. Oh, those dog days. Getting me down with my thesaurus friends and rhyming dictionaries. Those dog days. I don't know what that means. Uh, anyway, but this is of or relating to the dog days. But this is from Canicular is of the star Sirius, which is a dog. Canicularis from Canicula, which is Sirius, diminutive of Canis, uh, which is not quite our last word. Uh, it's probably in the next episode. It's dog-related, but our last word is also dog-related, I believe. It is canid, or canid, C-A-N-I-D. Noun from circa 1889, any of a family of carnivorous animals that includes the wolves, the jackals, the foxes, coyote, and the domestic dog. Yes, ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, the domestic dog is a canid. I think I like canid better. The domestic dog is a canid. Who knew? Science. What is happening? This is from the family Canidae. So today we had candy, candy floss, candy striper, candy tuft, cane, cane break, caner, canescent, cane sugar, cane wear, canicular, and Canid. Oh, I am torn between cane sugar. I think the microphone's too close. Cane sugar 
or candy floss? Can they make candy floss from cane sugar? Is this possible? Why do I like sweet so much? This isn't healthy. This is literally not healthy. It's okay. I'm not that bad. Um, ooh, this is a hard one. I think I'm going to pick candy floss as the word of the episode because it is such a great two-word combination. Candy floss. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, this is the end of page 179. Uh, this is, I, I don't know. That's about it, right? That's all we got to say. Thank you. Bye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. We are at the top of page 180. Um, and, uh, you know, the last few episodes, I feel like maybe were a little bit odd. Um, I am trying to uh, sort of allow myself, I was going to say force myself, but it's more allow myself to just uh, say whatever pops into my mind. Sometimes it's sing whatever pops into my mind. Um and, uh, you know, just sort of be my weird self. And I, I hope that um, you can see the ridiculousness of what I'm doing. And you can do the same. You can feel comfortable to do the same because I am very much embarrassing myself with all of this. Uh, but I think it's fun. And I hope you find it uh, at least a little bit entertaining. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, that's all I got to say about that. So, yeah, you're, you're just going to probably hear more uh, insanity as the episodes go on with random singing and stupid jokes. Just more of all that stuff. Okay, so the first word is canine. C-A-N-I-N-E. First form, noun from the 15th century. One uh, is a, con- a conical, a conical pointed tooth, especially one situated between the lateral incisor and the first premolar. See the tooth illustration. Ooh, sweet. There's a whole illustration about the teeth. Uh, you know, I think most of us probably know which one our canine tooth is. Some people have real pointy canine teeth and some people don't. And yeah, I think we all sort of want sharp. We want the cool, sharp canine teeth, right? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Number two is the synonym. Uh, it's the 1A definition for the word dog. And then broadly, canid or canid, I think it's canid, uh, is the synonym, which was the end of the last episode. Um, And uh, canine, you could also, uh, the British will say canine, I think, instead of canine. Yeah. Um, And then the second form of canine is an adjective from 1607, one of or resembling that of a dog, as in canine loyalty. Number two, of or relating to dogs or to the family, including the canids. And that family is canidae. The, let's see, this is from the Latin canis, which means dog, and there's more at the word hound. Next is canine distemper. Two words, noun from 1929. And we have the number two, a definition for the word distemper as a synonym. So there's distemper in general. I think this is a... Uh, a, a disease or a something something that animals can get and then there are different kinds i think there's feline distemper and canine distemper so just sub variations of that next is canis major two words capital c capital m noun from the 14th century a constellation to the southeast of orion containing sirius and sirius is with a with a capital S, uh, Sirius Radio, I think, is named after that. Um, this is, um, uh, let's see, Latin Canis Majoris literally means greater dog. So it's bigger dog, greater dog. Because then we also have, next is Canis Minor, or Canis Minor. Uh, noun from the 14th century. A constellation to the east of Orion containing Procyon. Capital P-R-O-C-Y-O-N. That would be a different star. So uh, this means lesser dog, uh, probably just smaller. So uh, one of them is to the southeast of Orion, and then the other one is to the east of Orion. So they're probably semi-close to each other. And some people long ago said that looks like a dog, and that looks like a smaller dog. I don't know. I think that's what it is. Okay, next we have canister with one N or two Ns. 
This is a noun from 1692. One, an often cylindrical container for holding a usually specified object or substance, as in a film canister. That would be holding film. Number two, encased shot for close-range artillery fire. Three, a perforated metal box for gas masks with material to absorb, filter, or detoxify airborne poisons and irritants. Uh, This is from Latin, canistrum, which means basket. From the Greek, canastron, which means wicker basket. From canna, with a K, which means reed. And there's more at the word cane, with a C. Next is canker. First form, noun, from before the 12th century. 1A1, an erosive or spreading sore. We you don't like a canker sore. 1A2, an area of necrosis on a plant or in a plant. That means it's dying. Also, a plant disease characterized by cankers. 1B, any of various disorders of animals marked by chronic inflammatory changes. 2 is archaic, a caterpillar destructive to plants. So I wonder if those cause cankers in plants. Uh, And so... It's the caterpillar called a canker, and then they eat it, and then the parts around that die, and those are called cankers? I don't know. Number three is chiefly dialect. Number one definition for the word rust. And number four, a source of corruption or debasement. And number five is also chiefly dialect. Synonym is dog rose, two words. It's like the animal and the plant. Cankerous is an adjective. Mm, uh, this is from Latin cancer, cancer, conquer, which means crab, which means cancer, or a crab or cancer. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's a thing that grows and makes a, an area bad. I don't know if you can get cancer from a canker sore, though. I think that's, uh, it's just a, a name thing. That's what I believe. Uh, next is the second form of canker verb from uh, the 14th century. Transitive is first. Number one is obsolete. To infect with a spreading sore. Two, to corrupt the spirit of. And then intransitive, number one, to become infested with canker. Two, to become corrupted. Uh, Next is canker sore. So we're going to learn a little bit more. We're going to get in depth into this canker sore thing. Noun from circa 1596. A painful, shallow ulcer of the mouth that has a grayish-white base surrounded by a reddish-inflamed area and is of uncertain cause, but is not due to the virus causing herpes simplex. And then it says compared to cold sore. Uh, Maybe that is related to herpes simplex. I'm not sure. I should probably know these things. But uh, they don't know how it comes, and they think you, they just sort of come and go. If I'm remembering correctly, what, it's one of these that if you swish with a little bit of salt water, that's supposed to help it. I don't know. I don't know if that's cold sore, canker sore, one of those. Ask your parents or Google it. Next, we have canker worm. One word, noun from 1530. Either of two geometrid moths and especially their larvae, which are serious pests of fruit and shade trees. And the scientific names are Alsophila pometaria and uh, Paleacrita vernata. Those are the two geometrid moths. Why are they called geometrid? That's kind of a cool word. Next we have canna, C-A-N-N-A, noun from 1664, any of a genus of tropical herbs with simple stems, large leaves, and a terminal raceme of irregular flowers. Uh, and then the genus name is Canna of the family Canaceae, or Canaceae, okay, probably Canaceae. Uh, and then this is from that uh, genus name Canna, which is Latin, which means reed, and there's more at the word cane. Um, And then I believe that this would be the uh, genus slash family for the next few words. I think they're all related. Um, And I guess technically this gets into a little bit of an adult conversation, uh, but I believe it is also an important conversation to have, an important thing to learn about and think about. Uh, Okay, so the next one is uh, uh, cannabinoid. 
Uh, I've also heard it pronounced cannabinoid, probably other ways, but this one says cannabinoid. Noun from 1967, any of various chemical constituents, as THC or cannabinol, of cannabis or marijuana. So uh, any of various chemical constituents of cannabis or marijuana. And there's a bunch, and uh, one of them is cannabinol, um, which will be our next word. And uh, that, see, now this is, uh, well, there's, it mentions THC, there's also CBD, there's also like 100 or 200 other ones. Um, but it did mention cannabinol, which is our next word. Cannabinol, cannabinol, cannabini, cannabina, I don't know. So I think I, that brain, that song comes to brain lots of times. Wow, that was a terrible sentence. So cannabinol or cannabinol is a noun from 1896, a physiologically inactive crystalline cannabinoid, C21H26O2. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, and then our last word, which is also related to these, is just cannabis. This is a noun from 1783. Number one, synonym is the 1A definition for the word hemp. Two, any of the preparations or chemicals that are derived from the hemp and are psychoactive. Uh, there was some parentheses in there. The preparations are marijuana or hashish, and the chemicals, the example was THC. That's the one that most people know about. Also CBD, maybe more people know about that actually these days. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let's see. So we had canine, uh, canine distemper, canis major, canis minor, canister, canker, canker sore, canker worm, canna, cannabinoid, cannabinol, cannabis. Well, I, uh, I'm sure that I have mentioned this before, but I'm going to pick cannabis as the word of the episode because, um, it is, it is something that is in the news a lot and, uh, has had a very interesting relationship with the people of Earth, um, especially for the last hundred years, uh, but really the last thousands of years. Um, and uh, for those who don't know, I do have a podcast where I talk about this. Uh, I interview people who talk about their experiences with it, and uh, obviously they are all adults uh, because it is an adult thing. And uh, it's, I just think it's interesting. I wanted to know what people had to say about it. So uh, that podcast is called When I'm High. And uh, I think it's just a really important thing to talk about because so many people still believe that it is bad. And I can tell you from all of these stories, all these people that I've talked to, uh, it is not that. Uh, and so if you are curious to know more about it, if you are one of those people who doesn't know a lot about it or thinks that it is a bad thing, I would just recommend that you uh, do some research, go listen to my podcast, and uh, I think that's it. So thank you very much for listening, and until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. This is my podcast about all the stuff in the world uh, that we'd say in English. Uh, before we get started, I want to say that I recently got a new interv a new interview, a new review. Um, this, I got this, uh, let's see, we're still before Christmas as I'm recording this. Uh, December 15th, that's when I got it. So, it is from Jeffiner J. Looks sort of like Jennifer, but also Jeff. So, it's Jeffiner. Jeff, Jeffiner J. Uh, it is my new favorite thing. I'm a word nerd and have always liked the dictionary. I've thought it would be educational. I thought it would be educational to read it cover to cover, but always got discouraged. Having it read to me in five to ten minute chunks is exactly what I need. The intros and outros are as minimalist as the cover art, and it's wonderful. Hmm, now I want to make my intros and outros even longer, like I'm doing today. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that, but maybe every once in a while. But uh, thank you for uh, liking this and appreciating it enough to uh, to write a review, so thank you very much. Hey, be like Jeffiner. Go go give a review if you, if you are enjoying this. That would be lovely. Okay, our first word is canned, C-A-N-N-E-D. Adjective from 1904, 1A, uh, prepared or recorded in advance, especially prepared in standardized form 
for non-specific use or wide distribution, as in canned laughter, also as in canned music. Insert joke here. 1B, lacking originality or individuality, as if mass-produced, as in canned sales pitch. It's just doing the same thing over and over again, and it's not that interesting, and maybe you should find a new sales pitch. Number two is slang, and we have the 1A definition for the word drunk. I guess people say, I'm so canned. I don't think I've ever heard that. Okay, next we have cannel coal, C-A-N-N-E-L, and then the word coal, noun from 1594. A bituminous or bituminous coal containing much volatile matter that burns brightly. Uh, This is probably from the English dialect word cannel, uh, which means candle. So uh, it's this coal that can burn. I mean, they all burn, uh, but maybe it looks like, it burns brightly, so it looks like a candle. Next, we have cannellini bean. Cannellini bean. Cannellini bean. Oh, I don't think I made a song for the last one. I sort of sang a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Let's make more of an effort to do that. Cannellini bean. It is a noun from uh, 1967. A usually large white kidney bean called also just cannellini. This is Italian uh, from the plural. It's the plural of cannellino, which is a kind of hard candy and a variety of white bean resembling the candy, probably from canella, which means cinnamon uh, or literally small tube. Okay, this is getting interesting. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it means hard candy. So maybe the bean, I think it said the bean looks like the hard candy. Maybe I need to do a side-by-side comparison. Okay, next we have... Cannelloni. Cannelloni. It is a noun from 1892. Boiled, tube-shaped, or rolled pasta filled with a meat, fish, cheese, or vegetable mixture and baked in a sauce. A cannelloni. Uh, this is from... Um, I, thought it, I thought it would be similar to the last one because it mentioned a tube, uh, but this one says it is from cannelloni, which is an augmented form of cannello, which is a segment of cane stalk. Uh, so yeah, it's not the tube, it's, it's cane stalk. Uh, okay, next we have cannery, noun from 1864, a factory for the canning of foods. The, the first word in this episode was canned, so in a cannery they're, they're canning stuff and then it becomes canned. It could be tomatoes, it could be fruits and vegetables, lots of things you can can. Good for when the apocalypse comes. Okay, next we have cannibal. Hopefully when the apocalypse comes, nobody has to be a cannibal. That would be terrible for all parties. Noun from 1553. One that eats the flesh of its own kind. Okay, let's see. This is a Spanish word, cannibal, or cannibal, from Taino, caniba, which is of cariban origin akin to the carib word Carina, uh, which means person. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So I think it's, uh, I don't know. I, I can't figure it out. If there's a connection, carib, carib, lots of similar words. Um, anyway, it just means person, and then, then they get eaten. Next is cannibalize with an S-E, British variation of cannibalize with a Z-E. Next is cannibalism, noun from 1796. One, the usually ritualistic eating of human flesh by a human being. I should have given a trigger warning for that one. Yeah, we're, we're digging deeper into what a cannibal is. Number two, the eating of the flesh of an animal by another animal of the same kind. So what's interesting is that the word itself comes from uh, the word that means person, but we now understand it as Uh, Not necessarily a person eating another person, although that's typically what it is. It's really just any organism that's eating another organism that's the same kind. Uh, They're cannibalizing on each other. Uh, Okay, so then number three for cannibalism is an act of cannibalizing something. Uh, Cannibalistic is an adjective. Cannibalistic missile. I don't know. Ballistic is in there. It's not spelled the same way. 
Uh, what would that be? A missile that eats other missiles? Uh, okay, moving on to cannibalize. We have a little bit more to talk about. Actually, there's a bunch here. What is cannibalize? It is a verb from 1943, starting with transitive. 1A, to take sal- salvageable parts from for use in building or repairing another machine. Uh, and then you would be taking pa- sal- I cannot say this word, salvageable parts from something like a disabled machine. Uh, so this is connected to the number three definition of the one that we just read, an act of cannibalizing something. So uh, if you got a car and you got another car, but the first car ain't working so good, you can take the parts that are working, you can cannibalize them and put them into another, the other car that you got. Okay, number 1B, to make use of, where, where's the end of the parentheses? To make use of in building, repairing, or creating something else. And the parentheses says, a part taken from one thing. Yeah, it's, it's just very similar to the last one I read. Number two, to deprive of an essential part or element in creating or sustaining another facility or enterprise, as in, the energy system has begun cannibalizing the economic system it is supposed to fuel. That is a quote from Barry Commoner. No clue from where. Three, to use or draw on material as... No, uh, to use or draw on material... Uh, a material of... That's the end of that sentence parentheses, as another writer or an earlier work. So taking from uh, your own work or somebody else's work and cannibalizing it. And then we have an example, a biography that cannibalizes previous biographies. Well, that's not very nice. You can't take the work from other work from other people and say that it's your own. Okay, number four, to take away from an existing product by selling or being sold as a similar but new product, usually from the same manufacturer also, to affect, uh, to, affect, to affect adversely by cannibalizing sales. Uh, and then there were some, some uh, examples in there. You could take sales away uh, to affect an existing product adversely by cannibalizing sales. Okay, intransitive. One, to practice cannibalism. Two, to cannibalize one unit for the sake of another of the same kind. Cannibalization is a noun, and there is no etymology. So we are going to move on to Kanakin. Kanakin Skywalker, C-A-N-N-I-K-I-N, noun from 1570, a small can or drinking vessel. I've never heard of this. Uh, Let's see, it is probably from the obsolete Dutch word Kanakin, with Ks, uh, from Middle Dutch Kanakin, uh, diminutive of cane, which means can, akin to the Old English can, which means can. Uh, so it's it's a can, but wh- wh- why aren't we using this word? Did we really just have feel like we had to shorten it? Uh, canakin, canakin, canakin. Who uses this word anymore? Probably nobody. Next is cannoli. Uh, this is a, well, it's a noun. There it is. There it says noun. From 1943, a deep-fried tube of pastry. You can just stop right there. I'm sold. A deep-fried tube of pastry filled with sweetened and flavored ricotta cheese. Uh, of course, I've had a cannoli before. I used to get every once in a while. They had this, uh, uh, it was like a cookie dough cannoli, I think. Whatever was the filling was like cookie dough. Holy jeez, this was so tasty and so good. Um, yeah. Cannolis are pretty good. Uh, This is Italian. It is the plural of cannolo, which is a small tube. Oh, going back to one of our earlier words. Uh, Yep, that's good for that. Okay, next we have canon. C-A-N-N-O-N. First form, noun from the 15th century. One. Uh, Let's see. In this case, the plural is usually just canon with no S. So 1A, a large heavy gun usually mounted on a carriage. Uh, I don't think that they mean a carriage that like a horse pulls. Although I guess technically back in the day, they probably did have horses pull these things. But I'm talking about like a carriage you would see in Central Park or something. There ain't going to be a cannon on that. 1B, 
a heavy caliber automatic aircraft gun firing explosive shells. Okay, number two could be spelled just C-A-N-O-N or the double N like we originally said it. Uh, So number two is the projecting part of a bell by which it is hung. I had no idea that part had a name. It's the cannon. And then the synonym for that one is just called ear. So maybe it's also called an ear. Number three, the part of the leg in which the cannon bone is found. Where's the cannon bone? I don't think I ever heard of the cannon bone. All right, learning something new. Um, And then I think this bell one is probably related to... Oh, no, that's C-A-M. Hmm. I don't know. I thought it was related to those bell words that I read with Carrie, uh, but maybe not. Okay, second form of canon. Uh, oh, is there etymology we need to read? It is from Italian. Canone literally means large tube. Uh, augmented of canna, read, tube, cane, read. More at the word cane. Okay, second form of canon with two ends. Uh, from 1567, the intransitive verb I, I should have said it's a verb the intransitive definition says to discharge cannon and transitive says cannonade is the synonym what is cannonade is that where you shoot out lemons from your cannon with water and sugar and ice and then you've got cannonade no probably not uh, but i can tell you it is our next word it is also our last word uh, it is the first form and you're gonna have to wait Till tomorrow to hear the second form. Cannonade is a noun from 1562. One, a heavy fire or artillery. Two, an attack, as with words, likened to artillery fire. I like that. It's an attack of words. And then a synonym is bombardment. Okay, so we had canned, canned coal, cannellini bean, cannellini bean, I don't know if I'm going to pick this as the word of the episode, but I like just saying cannellini bean. Cannelloni, cannery, cannibal, cannibalize, cannibalism, cannibalize, cannikin, cannoli, cannon, and cannonade. Uh, let's see. What, what, what shall I pick? Um, let's see. That was that. Well, maybe I should just go with my standard sort of way to pick a word and i will pick cannoli as the word of the episode uh yeah i don't know if you're gonna get an actual song for this one um cannoli cannoli i just said you weren't gonna get a song for cannoli but here i am singing about cannolis oh man we just watched the movie elf uh and then he he sings a couple of times and they're terrible terrible songs i mean they're almost as bad as mine. And I was like, wow, I'm, I, maybe it's not that easy to make up a song on the spot. Uh, maybe for some people it is. But for me and Buddy the Elf, it's not so easy. I'm singing in a store. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, we're just going to end this there. Thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer Dispensing Information. Goodbye. Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. I hope you are enjoying this. It is super educational, right? Yes, it is. Uh, Okay. The first word for this episode is the same as the last word in the last episode. It is cannonade, uh, second form, verb from 1664. Transitive says to attack with or as if with artillery. And then intransitive, to deliver artillery fire. Next is cannonball, one word, first form, noun from 1655. One, a usually round, solid missile made for firing from a cannon. Two, a jump into water made with the arms holding the knees tight against the chest. Oh, yes, we've all done this, right? And then you yell cannonball, and you jump into the water, and you make it splash all over the place, and then people yell at you because they didn't want to get wet. Well... Maybe you shouldn't have invited me. Number three, a hard, flat tennis service. A flat tennis service? What does that mean, flat? Like flat again, flat across what? I don't know. I don't know. Number four, an express train. It's so fast, it's like a cannonball. There's a great scene in Adventures of Baron Munchausen with a cannonball sort of early on in the movie. Uh... It's, it's just very weird and strange and wonderful. 
Okay, second form of cannonball, intransitive verb from 1951, to travel with great speed. Next is cannon bone. Oh, I was wondering about this in the last episode. Let's uh, find out what this is. Two words, noun from 1834. A bone in hoofed mammals that extends from the knee or hock to the fetlock, especially the enlarged metacarpal or metatarsal of the third digit of a horse. Well, I need to see a picture. I don't understand. Extends from the knee or hock to the fetlock. Where's the fetlock? Is it only in animals? It says it's a bone in hoofed mammals, so humans must not have these because our feet are not hoofed. They're footed. Footed, not hoofed. Uh, Okay, this is French. uh, Literally means just cannon. So maybe it looks like a cannon. Not entirely sure. Maybe we'll find a picture. Okay, next is cannoneer. Noun from 1562. An artillery gunner. Next is cannon fodder. F-O-D-D-E-R. Two words. Noun from circa 1891. Number one. Soldiers regarded or treated as expendable in battle. Two, an expendable or exploitable person, group, or thing, as in celebrities who have become cannon fodder for the tabloids. I feel very bad for them. Next is cannonry, noun from 1811, a battery of cannons or cannon fire. Next is, oh, you could say this a few ways. I would pronounce it Cannot. It is spelled C-A-N-N-O-T. Cannot. You could also say cannot. You can emphasize the first syllable. Cannot. 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 Yep. This is from the 15th century. It is not a thing, like a noun or a verb. And it just means cannot. Two words. Cannot. Who knew? Who knew? I think I think most of you did. Uh, okay, we have a... F- couple versions of the same phrase i think uh cannot but or cannot help but also cannot help okay and that means to be unable to do otherwise then as in we cannot but wonder why we cannot but wonder why to be unable to do otherwise then wow that is a complicated to be unable to do otherwise then seriously when you really think about that it don't make no sense it, but it also makes all the sense Okay, moving on to cannula, C-A-N-N-U-L-A, noun from 1684, a small tube for insertion into a body cavity or into a duct or vessel. And wouldn't you know it, this is also related etymologically to some of the last words we've had recently, because it's a tube. Okay, next we have cannular, adjective from 1823, synonym is tubular so when you think you got a tube it's also it's a cannula it's tubular and it's cannular because it's a tube because a cannula is a tube and a tube is a tube a tube is a tube and a tube is a tube cannulas are also tubes moving on to cannulate verb from 1926 to insert a cannula into as in cannulated the femoral artery that is a thing that has to happen when people are going under for surgery and usually maybe they got to access the femoral artery to access their heart or something and then they put a little tube into that tube and they are being uh, they're doing some cannulation cannulation is a noun sometimes i think i should just stop talking okay the next word is canny c a n n y First form, adjective from 1596. One, synonyms are clever and shrewd, as in a canny lawyer. All right. Also, synonym is prudent, as in canny investments. Two is chiefly Scottish. We have two A. Synonyms are careful and steady. Also, the synonym restrained. And then two B. Synonyms are quiet and snug, as in then canny in some cozy place they close the day that is a quote from robert burns he must be scottish right then canny in some cozy place they close the day not sure what it means but it's something about 
ending the day being cozy, which sounds pretty awesome. Uh, it's getting sort of near the end of my day. Not, we're not quite there yet. The sun is still up, but it, the candy part of the day is coming up. I'm going to sit on the couch and probably eat some dinner and watch a movie maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but I shall be canny. Second form of canny is an adverb from circa 1796. It is Scottish, and it means in a canny manner. Synonym is carefully. So it's not cozy, uh, but it is carefully. All right. Uh, Next is the word canoe. First form, noun from 1555. A light, narrow boat with both ends sharp that is usually propelled by paddling. You got to do that paddling to propel the canoe. This is a French word from Spanish, from Arawakan. Uh, I think that's like another, maybe a subset of Spanish. I'm not sure. It is of Cariban origin, akin to the Carib word Kanawa, which means canoe. Uh, Arawakan might also be uh, uh, an indigenous American language and group of people. Not Spanish, probably. Uh, yeah, so they uh, it's their word. And Carib, Carib word, Kanawa. We just say canoe. Okay, next is the second form of canoe. Verb from 1794. To transport in a canoe. Also, to travel by canoe down a river. To travel by canoe down. That's a weird end of a sentence, uh, but then there's an example which is talking about a river. Intransitive definition says to go or travel in a canoe. I, I enjoy doing a little canoeing. I mean, I have done it, not for a while. Um, I like it. But getting in the canoe and getting out of the canoe is the scariest part for me because it is so wobbly. Uh, I'm, I'm not so confident in as, you know, real real experienced canoers can just hop in and out real quick. They're confident, but uh, I'm still a little wary. Uh, and so I'm worried that I'm going to tip it over. And uh, I have. I think I have. Uh, okay, done with canoes. Next is, uh, oh, I should probably also say canoeable is an adjective. Uh, That's probably talking about an area of water is canoeable. Um, But also, a canoe can be canoeable. It is uh, built well enough to be canoeable, right? Uh, Canoeist is a noun. That is a a person who is doing the canoeing, probably, or maybe who makes canoes. Uh, And then there's also canoeer. That is probably also a person who is in the canoe, doing the canoeing on a canoeable river. Okay, next is can of worms, three words from 1962, and we just have the synonym Pandora's box. If you don't know what Pandora's box is, uh, you can think of a can of worms, sort of, not really. We'll get into it later in the peas. Next is canola, noun from uh, 1979, one, a rape plant, of an improved variety having seeds that are low in uh, ursic, no, erucic acid. I think that's how you say that word. E-R-U-C-I-C, erucic acid, and are the source of canola oil. Number two, synonym is just canola oil. Um, yeah, that is that for that. And then if you want to know what canola oil is, it is our last word, noun from 1981, an edible vegetable oil obtained from the seeds of canola that is high in monosaturated fatty acids. So if you want your monosaturated, oh, sorry, monounsaturated, monounsaturated. If you want your monounsaturated fatty acids, you can get yourself some canola oil. So we had cannonade, cannonball, cannon bone, cannoneer, cannon fodder, cannonry, cannot, cannula, cannular, cannulate, canny, Canny, canoe, can of worms, canola, and canola oil. Uh, yeah, I got to pick one. I got to pick one. What shall we pick? Um, let's see. Can, da, 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 da. All I can think about is the fact that I want some food. Um, well, let us pick can of worms, I guess, as uh, the word of the episode. Uh, I have opened up a can of worms uh, by starting to do this podcast and sticking to it. It's a whole can of worms that, uh, that I'm reading about and I'm learning about and is spewing out of my mouth. Uh, who knows what is going to come next? I don't know. Okay, I think that's good for today. 
Uh, thank you very much for listening. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. <laughs>